Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer from the Book of Common Prayer um, on this Sunday which is the 16th Sunday after Trinity. Today we've celebrated Harvest Festival. Yesterday I sent out an email um, inviting people to come and uh, place a harvest uh, gift in boxes in the porch in the church uh, which I've left open throughout the day. I didn't really expect very much, but as usual, the people of Brimfield are so generous and kind-hearted. The boxes and bags are full to bursting, and tomorrow I will take them um, to somebody who can distribute them via the food bank. It's good for us to remember that all our gifts, everything we have comes from God, and we give him back of our own. And so thank you for your generosity. Let's just hold a moment in quiet and prepare our hearts and minds to worship God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him through our Lord Jesus Christ our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace. And to ask on behalf of all people such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 65. Thou, O God, art praised in Zion, and unto thee shall the vow be performed in Jerusalem. Thou that hearest the prayer, unto thee shall all flesh come. My misdeeds prevail against me, O be thou merciful unto our sins. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest, and receivest unto thee. He shall dwell in thy court, and shall be satisfied with the pleasures of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Thou shalt show us wonderful things in thy righteousness, O God of our salvation. Thou that art the hope of all the ends of the earth, and of them that remain in the broad sea. Who, who in his strength settest fast the mountains, and is girded about with power. Who stilleth the raging of the sea, and the noise of his waves, and the madness of the people. They also that dwell in the uttermost parts of the earth, shall be afraid at thy tokens, thou that makest the outgoings of the morning and evening to praise thee. Thou visitest, 
the earth and blessed it. Thou makest it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. Thou preparest their corn, for so thou providest for the earth. Thou waterest her furrows. Thou sendest rain into the little valleys thereof. Thou makest it soft with the drops of rain and blessed the increase of it. Thou crownest the year with thy goodness and thy clouds drop fatness. They shall drop upon the dwellings of the wilderness and the little hills shall rejoice on every side. The fold shall be full of sheep. The valleys also shall stand so thick with corn that they shall laugh and sing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Magnificat My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour. For he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden, for behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath hope in his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers Abraham and his seed for ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 8. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading this morning is from Luke 12, 16 to 21. Alleluia, alleluia, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are ripe for harvesting. Gather the fruit for eternal life. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. It feels really difficult to be celebrating Harvest Festival in such a time as this. We are just beginning to hear of more restrictions being placed on our lives. 
some of the supermarket markets are restricting how much we can buy in one go again. We are being restricted, restricted in how many people we can meet at one time. Some people's work is being restricted whilst others have lost jobs and businesses and money is tight. And in this atmosphere, I don't think we feel cheerful. So it's good for us to hear today from 2 Corinthians 9 that God loves a cheerful giver. And from our Gospel reading in Luke, we hear the parable of the man who stored up his abundant harvest only to be called foolish by God. There are deep messages for us here. There are also some quite lightweight messages here too. We don't need to panic by my friends. If everyone just purchases what they need for the week ahead, there will be enough. But let's start to think more deeply. We live in a culture where people really do hoard stuff. They hoard money into savings account and complain that the interest is low. Houses are so full of clutter that they no longer really feel like homes. There is a culture of relax, eat, drink and be merry. Or at least there was until the dreaded coronavirus pandemic hit. We all know that we, the human race, are consuming too much. This world that we live in cannot produce as much as we all think we need. There are issues of justice too. Far too many people living in desperate poverty, without enough to eat, without adequate shelter for their families, without education or health care. These are injustices which run deep when so many of us live in luxury hoarding food with vast amounts of savings, yet still living with uncertainty and misery. And I wonder, not a question to be answered out loud, but I wonder when was the last time you were thankful for your food? When did you last say grace before a meal? When did you last think about where your food came from? The people who work the land to produce it, those who picked it or gathered it, those who moved it and sold it to you. I think these times we are living through are an opportunity for us, each and every one of us, to become more humble, to begin to appreciate what we have to start to be a thankful people once again. Earlier this year, I planted some vegetables in a small plot in the Vicarage garden. Now I grew up in a family where food was grown on an allotment. It was exciting as a child to see tomatoes and greens, potatoes and gooseberries grow. And for years I have been promising myself that I will plant something that will be of use rather than just things that are decorative. And so this year, finally, I have enjoyed watching the produce, uh, the seeds which I planted grow and ripen. I have enjoyed picking and eating the food. One of the things that I have been reminded of is just how much work goes into ensuring that the small amount of food I'm growing takes on a regular basis. And I've not done this all myself. I must admit that my mum is so much better at this than me. She's very regularly to be found in the vicarage garden, digging, weeding, watering, nipping the unproductive parts of the plants out, staking, more watering, rescuing after storms and high winds, and visits from the grandchildren who do like to douse everything in loads and loads of water. These small plants have taught me that I need to put in effort if I want reward. Something I knew already, but had kind of forgotten over time. It is so much easier just to pop to the shops once a week and pick up what I need. But there are profound lessons in growing your own. Getting our hands dirty, being thankful for the earth, the sun and the rain, and for help 
with the work which needs to be done to produce a harvest. And there is also great joy in sharing what my garden has produced. When I pick some leeks or tomatoes, I want to give the best ones away, knowing that there will be enough for me to use. Knowing that what I have, maybe the nibbled ones or the damaged ones, the squashed ones, they will be tasty and satisfying anyway. What I want to give away is the best stuff not the damaged or, or the unripe. And so I've become a cheerful giver, even if it is just some tomatoes, some leeks or some kale. The whole world is God's creation. Our lives are a gift. Our ability to work and earn and be productive, being part of the process, should make us both want to be thankful for all that we have but also want to make us cheerful givers, people who want to share in the good things of life. Our Christian faith reminds us that we are foolish if we just work for our own needs to be met. We are called by Jesus to be generous, cheerful in that generosity, to trust in our Father God, the Creator, to provide for all our needs. This harvest time, although different in so many ways to other harvest celebrations we have had over the years, perhaps enables us to think more profoundly about the earth, its resources, our work, seeking after justice for all the people of the earth. The way we are generous, not giving just enough to satisfy our need to be charitable, but sharing more extensively all that we have the first fruits, knowing that all things come from God, so we are just giving away what he has provided for us to give. Take some time today to read and reread the words of Psalm 65. Um, I'm going to put them on the website so that you have them readily available. Take time to ponder the gifts of God in your lives. Take time to give thanks for all that God has provided for you and begin to consider afresh how much more pleasure there is in sharing than in hoarding. Amen. The Apostles' Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. 
collect for the 16th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech thee, let thy continual pity cleanse and defend thy church. And because it cannot continue in safety without thy succour, preserve it evermore by thy help and goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to our prayers of intercessions. When I say God of the abundant harvest, the response is, we give you thanks. Let us offer our prayers to God for the life of the world and for all God's people in their daily life and work. God, the beginning and end of all things, in your providence and care, you watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayers that in us and in all your people, your will may be done, according to your wise and loving purpose in Christ our Lord. God of the abundant harvest, we give you thanks. We pray for all through whom we receive sustenance and life, for farmers and agricultural workers, for packers, distributors and company boards. As you have so ordered our life that we depend upon each other, enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of others before our own. God of the abundant harvest, we give you thanks. We pray for all engaged in research to safeguard crops against disease and to produce abundant life among those who hunger and whose lives are at risk. Prosper the work of their hands and the searching of their minds that their labour may be for the welfare of all. God of the abundant harvest, we give you thanks. We pray for governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and starvation. By the grace of your spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your gifts. God of the abundant harvest, we give you thanks. We pray for those who are ill remembering those in hospital and nursing homes and all who are known to us. We pray for all who care for them, give skill and understanding to all who work for their well-being. God of the abundant harvest, we give you thanks. We remember those who have died whom we entrust to your eternal love in the hope of resurrection to new life. God of the abundant harvest, we give you thanks. We offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. God of the abundant harvest, we give you thanks. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfil your wise and loving purpose in us and in all for whom we pray, that with them and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed and the whole earth give praise to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Nactimitus. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace, 
according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to lighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you, and those you pray for today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining me for evening prayer. Um, not quite sure what's, uh, what the future holds for us. We are having a PCC meeting tomorrow evening, Monday evening, um, and the magazine will be published after that, so a few days later than normal. Um, but if you have a chance to check out our website or our Facebook page, I'll make sure there's information on there as to when the church will reopen uh, and the services which we'll be offering in the autumn and into the winter. But for now, my friends, stay safe, stay well. May God be with you. Good night. <laughs>